Good morning, Sarah it is. This is a weekend that the Lord has blessed us with. The day that the Lord has made, it is just a day to rejoice and to be glad in Him. What a beautiful, beautiful blessing to behold the beauty of the Lord, even in the, in the land of the living. We thank God because of His goodness. We thank God that the whole week has been a beautiful week. You know, this is the last day of the week. Even as we turn out tomorrow for the new day and the new day of the week. And that we thank God that the Lord has been faithful. Faithful to us in the midst of the changing world and every kind of thing that are coming. And in the midst of enjoying the goodness of the Lord and the love of God. He has been remained faithful. He has love. He has remained constant. We can trust him. We can have faith in him. He that changes not. Who have have made sure that our ground is secure because he is the lock of our salvation. And therefore, welcome, my brother and sister, even as we continue to share the theme of the year, giving as a way of worship. Yesterday, we were able to start off and say that giving must be, must be connected with love. In other words, we give because we love the Lord. We don't give to untwist God. We don't give so that we can bribe God because... Amazingly, even if we don't give, he gives to us. By the way, we have been unfaithful in our giving. How many people are faithful to give their tithes? How many people are willing to faithfully give their thanksgiving in proportion to the things that the Lord has done? How many people are able that we are able to share what God has blessed us with, with our brothers and sisters who are in need? How many times do we find ourselves and willing even to obey the word of God, even when he speaks to us, that we may be able to open our eyes to the need of the church, to the need of people, to the needs of the less fortunate. But sometimes we hold what we have selfishly as if we own it. Well, else we know that he is the owner of everything. And therefore, brethren, we said, we must accept that we must love the Lord with all our hearts, and who we are, and out of love, we are able to give our tithes with, with joy. Remember Paul encouraging the church that they are supposed to give cheer-free, cheer-free, and with joy, so that in return, we can find God's blessings. And I want also to say, brethren, we also say that giving must be given with an attitude that we are not giving because we are in any way benefiting God. It is for our own good. It is for our own good. God doesn't need it. By the way, amazingly, he doesn't need it because even what we give, we give out of what he has given. Out of what he has given is what we give. Therefore, he doesn't need it. And finally, and a very important thing, we also agree together that we also give. We always give. And we are willing to give as worship because it is supposed to honor God. And our lives are supposed to be a lives of honor because at the end of the day, giving, we said, as a bottom line, it is also eternal. It brings and connects with our eternity. Because when we learn to give, we do not only give our wealth, Jesus said, we give all who we are, our minds, our souls, our strength, and everything that we have. And therefore, when we give ourselves to our God, then we find true redemption and salvation. And therefore, eternity is assured. And not only eternity, but eternity in God's presence, eternity with our God is assured. Allow me this morning that I may be able to pick two things very fast. And I just want to call them, and allow me to call them the whys of giving. The whys of giving. Or you can even dub it the benefits of giving. The reasons why we should give. Why should you give? Number one, it is important to know that Giving, giving is evidence of our obedience and submission to God. Giving. Why we give? Because when we give, it is a true evidence of our submission and our obedience to our God. Why? Let me remind you of someone that I love. Martin Luther, it's so amazing that uh, one of the things that Martin Luther, the reformist, said, he said, the two things are so amazing about any Christian that at any true Christian have to go through conversions. And the first conversion that the, he must be, con that his soul must be 
go through conversion. In other words, that God has to turn and he has to allow himself to be changed on about his soul. Because every soul that sinneth shall die. And therefore we must go through conversion. We must be converted from sinfulness to issues of holiness and righteousness. But he also said that his pocketbook must also be go through conversion. An amazing Martin Luther said, those two things shows the reality of where a man is. And he said that it is very easy for us to say how much we love the Lord. Very easy to say how much we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Or even how much we are born again and Christians. But he also says our, our pocket and our wealth must go to where our mouth is. In other words, our confession about the love of God must be proven by how much we are willing to give to our God whom we say that we love. And having said that, brethren, it is important to understand that when we truly are willing to give our tithes faith free, our thanksgiving, and every man our offering, and even our arms when we share our wealth with other people who are as fortunate, it also shows us that we are willing to submit to the will of God. Why do I say that very fast? In the Old Testament, in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, and you can even go and even read in the book of um, Exodus. In fact, in the whole Old Testament, one of the things that God commanded, he commanded that the Israelites, even when they settle in the land of Abadans, that they are supposed to give the 10% of their wealth. Why were they supposed to give the 10% of their wealth? God had said that as they give that wealth, it is taken to the temple so that the Levites and the priests will be managed and the work of the temple will be maintained. But why was he doing that? That even a stranger who comes by will be able to be taken care of. The widows and the orphans will be taken care of. And when he was doing that, he did that, that the, the Israelite may acknowledge that all what they have and who they are belongs to God. That even a good harvest cannot just happen. It is God who commands the heaven to open and the, the flourishing of the crops, the animals, and everything that they own. And they learned that God is able to shut the heavens, but he is also able to open the heavens. And therefore they knew when they enjoy goodness, when they enjoy every manner of abundance, fruitfulness, they knew it was by the gods, the grace of God. Therefore, they were asked that every time they must acknowledge that it's God, it is not us. It's not by our strength. It is not our, by our wisdom and understanding. It's not by our experience. It's not because we have a fertile land. It is by the grace of God. Allow me to remind you in the New Testament, when Jesus comes to confirm issues giving, it's so amazing that Jesus spoke about giving so many times than he spoke about even issues, the hell and heaven. Now, you know, it's amazing when I see the records of the Bible on how Jesus talks about giving to an extent that for him, he even laced the bar so high. You know, in the Old Testament, it was about the giving of the 10%. Sometimes it's about the giving of the fast fruit. But Jesus comes in and says, when you give, he did not only talk about the tithe, he says, we must give in proportion of our blessing. And allow me just to maybe be able to say that. And he's saying that how much you want to be blessed is how much you give. Now, can you listen to this? The words of Jesus in the book of Luke chapter 6 and verses 38. He says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and learning over will be poured unto your wrath. For with the measure you use, it will be used to you. Can you imagine that Jesus says, if you want to get, want to get retro, give retro. If you want to get much, give much. That the, the standard of Jesus on giving is that we must give in proportion and also in expectations of the blessing that we'd want the Lord to bless us with. Now that one, seems to be even higher. That's why now I would want to say, brethren, it is important to know that giving is not an option. Giving is 
a requirement, an expectation from our God. And therefore, it is important to know why we should give. Because giving is an acknowledgement and an evidence of our love for God and evidence of obedience and submission to our God. Allow me also to mention that number two I want to talk about very fast this morning is about why we should give. Number two, we should give because giving set our priorities straight. Now, can I even say it is set not only a prioritized light, but straight, but also light. Now, allow me to mention and say this. You see, the Bible in the book of Matthew, chapter six, verses uh, verses six and uh, verses uh, chapter six, verses ten and twenty, is what I had also uh, mentioned. I think yesterday, and I said, you know, one of the things that Jesus said, He says, you should always remember that where your treasure is, that's where your soul is. And therefore, when we are giving unconsciously, we are telling ourselves where our loyalty, our priority, and where our lives are set. Now, allow me to say this because it's a fact. If you want even to know how much you cherish and what you cherish and the things you cherish, just go down and look about your giving graph. Where do you take your money? Where do you spend most of your time? Where do you spend most of your strength? By the way, I can tell you, without any fear of contradiction, that's where you put about your strength, your monies, and your time is your priority. If it is your family, then that is your priority. If it is about your job, I know there are people who have completely changed their priority from relationships to wealth and material. You realize that everything and strength, the money and power they give, they give on how they can be able to become richer. It is important to mention and say this, giving reminds us that we must put our priorities right and straight. And how do we do it? Giving always reminds us it must begin with God. When I get that salary, even before I start even paying my debts and my rent and my school fees for my children, and every other that I should always remember, who has given me this? Is it not God? And it's because of the relationship that I have with him, then I must prioritize with him. It's amazing. That's why I love even how we start our, our week with God. We come to church. And I think one of the things that we are always given an opportunity is to give our offerings. And every time for me, I take that as an opportunity that as I start my week, and I know that is also something that you do, that when we are starting with the week, we acknowledge God with our offerings. Now that I'm even talking about the, the, the seed offering, which we call the normal offering, because what we are saying, you know what, God, when we are starting this week, I want to acknowledge you that I'm giving this offering as a seed to say, I am believing that whatever I put before you will go to work right for me. And therefore, it is important to mention that it is important by any means to remember to prioritize God. And that can be shown clearly by our giving. Therefore, why we should give and our giving becomes a way of worship is when our giving, it shows our priorities that our priority is in God. And finally, as I come to a cross, I want to remind us that it is so amazing that even uh, Paul, uh, when he was talking to the Colossians chapter 3 verses 2, he says, and set your mind on the things above not on the things of the world. Can I remind us that you know what, brethren? We can learn with this world. We can do all what we can do. But I can tell you for sure, when we close our eyes, when we close our eyes, what matters at that particular time is not how much we had amassed in this world, but how much we deposited and put the treasures in the second life that is eternal. And I just remember that you can imagine even such kind of a monarchy, monarchy like Queen Elizabeth, who now has been able to shut the curtains. But you know what matters now for her? is not about the monarchy. It's not about the prestige, the wealth, the honor, and everything that the way we saw when he was uh, enjoying the platinum, the 70 years, by the way, in the lane. But now what matters is the deposit he had kept 
about his eternity with our God. And may the Lord bless us and keep us, even as we take giving seriously as a way to worship God. And by the way, giving as a way to prioritize God and also giving as evidence of our submission and obedience to God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.